Hello. In this video, we are going to solve a steam power plant problem. Steam power or vapor power can be found in chapter 9 of the textbook. We are going to use uh, the open power cycle test calc with the PC model. And I hope you're familiar with open steady test calc on which this more advanced test calc is based on. So let's begin with the problem. So we have this diagram clearly shows we have a Rankine cycle. And notice uh, the exit states for the turbine and pump. There are two double states are given here. If you read the problem thoroughly, you will see an isentropic efficiency for the turbine and compressors, uh, sorry, and pump are given. That's why you have double states at the exit, one corresponding to the isentropic state, the lower number, and the higher number is for the actual state, which will be connected to the isentropic efficiency. So let us go and launch the test calc first. So we, we, I've already logged into the thermofluids.website. We go to the test calcs tab and we trace uh, in the test calc trees, we, we, we follow the open, open steady path, specific branch. That's where the vapor power and gas power cycles are located. And based on the material model we choose, in this case, obviously PC model, steam is a phase change fluid. That brings us to the test calc page. We are on the hands-on examples and currently we are trying to solve this particular problem. So we can go back and forth between uh, this example here, uh, the problem statement here, and once you go to the test calc tab, it launches the test calc. In Firefox, by default, Java is blocked, so you have to go and allow, and that will launch the test calc. It takes a while to load the test calc, but once it is loaded, it runs at native speed. Okay, so let us get started. Uh, let, let's see what we know about state one, which is the turbine inlet state. Uh, the pressure is given as, uh, the pressure at the inlet state is 10 MPa and it's saturated liquid, saturated vapor. Saturated vapor under the turbine is 10 MPa. So we come here, 10 MPa. And quality is one that specifies it's saturated. And notice the mass flow rate is not given. Instead, the power output is given. So we'll assume a mass flow rate of one kg per second to begin the problem, and we'll come back later and correct it. Once we know the output based on one kg per second, we can scale the problem up and find the correct M dot. So let's calculate the state. Uh, it should be a saturated state. Notice that you can go to the TS diagram and verify that state one is indeed a saturated vapor. Now we go to state two, which is the turbine exit state when it's isentropic and 0 0.01 MPa is the pressure and it's isentropic exit, so therefore entropy must be equal and of course mass flow rate must be the same. That gives us state two. Uh, we can turn off every time the plot and to do so we can say uh, we can select no plots. Now state three is the isentropic exit state, if you recall. Oh, sorry, the actual exit state. Uh, obviously, uh, the, that means the isentropic efficiency means the power, it compares the power output of the ideal isentropic and the actual turbine. The lower number goes on the top. So the isentropic turbine output will be higher then the actual uh, actual turbine outputs. The actual turbine output will be uh, H1 minus H3, and isentropic will be H1 minus H2, proportional to that. And that ratio must be 0 0.85. So now we, can, we get a relationship between uh, enthalpy at state three with enthalpy at state one and two, which is H1 minus H1 minus H2 times 0 
it's really a simple algebra to show that this expression is valid. We also know the pressure. Pressure at the exit is given, must be equal to the same as the isentropic exit pressure. And mass flow rate obviously doesn't change. And that gives us the exit, uh, the actual exit state. State 4 is very simple. Pressure doesn't change in the condenser, so P4 equals P3. And it is given that it must be saturated liquid, so X4 must be 0. Mass flow rate doesn't change. And state 5 is the isentropic. State 5 is the isentropic pump exit. So entropy, and, and of course the pressure at state 5 must be same as pressure at pressure at 1 in an ideal cycle boiler pressure boiler doesn't have any pressure loss so we can write H pressure 5 equals pressure at 1 and entropy hasn't changed that gives us the isentropic pump exit state to find the actual pump exit state which is which is connected to, again, the pump efficiency. Uh, again, if you go back to the uh, definition of isentropic efficiency, the actual pump work would be proportional to H6 minus H4, and the isentropic pump work is proportional to H5 minus H4. So their ratio is 0 0.85. And so with a little algebra, we can show that H6 can be related to enthalpies, other enthalpies as equals H4 plus the difference of the H5 minus H4 divided by 0 0.85. And of course, mass flow rate is given. I mean, it must be equal throughout the cycle. So therefore, state 6 is found. We can do a quick TS diagram to have a sanity check. State 1, 2 must be vertically down here. 3 should be to the right of 2. And state 5 must be to the left of 2, touching the saturation line. And state 6, we think, should be higher than state at H5. But you can show that in this particular diagram, the difference is so little, they're almost on top of each other. OK, so now let's go and analyze the devices. Device A, uh, let's name the devices as A, B, C, D. We'll call the turbine as A, condenser as B, pump as C, and boiler as D. With that in mind, state A, we have inlet state 1, and exit should be state 3, the actual exit state. Turbine is adiabatic, so Q dot equals 0, and hitting the enter button or the calculate button gets us the turbine work, which is 806 kilowatt. Okay, so let's now calculate the heat rejected by the condenser state 2 I'm sorry it should be state 3 which is the turbine exit to state 4 which is the condenser exit and there's no work in the condenser so we can find uh, the heat rejected by the condenser to be 726 kilowatt uh, the negative signs means it is rejected from the condenser now device C is the pump so we have 4 as pump inlet and 6 as the actual pump exit. There is no heat transfer in adiabatic pump, so the pump work has been found. Finally, device D is our boiler. Uh, we have the inlet state is state 6, exit state is state 1, in the boiler there is no work, no external work, so we have found Q dot. So all the devices have been calculated, A, B, C, D, and we just go to the cycle panel and do a calculate. So therefore, we immediately see that we have already calculated the efficiency. The thermal efficiency is shown here. Also, many other quantities are shown here. For instance, the network, you can see, is 794 kilowatt. However, in this particular problem, uh, you can see if you go to the 794 kilowatt is not the power. Power output of this plant is 150 megawatt. So now if to scale it up, all we have to do is to find 150 
1000 kilowatt divided by 794 is that what we found so that gives us 188.9 or something let me check if we got it right 794.8 so let's make it a little bit more accurate 150,000 divided by 794.8 so 188.7 kg per second should be the mass flow rate so we go to the state panel and go all the way to state 1 and we say mass flow rate is not 1 kg per second but it 188.72 kg per second and now to update all the calculation we just click the super calculate button and in a few seconds we have the complete solution redone and of course we expect the power output the net power output to be close to 150 megawatt uh, and sure enough it's 149.99 megawatt so now we have all the desired output right here or in individual devices we can go and check so for instance if the question is you know find the turbine output the answer would be uh, so much 152 megawatt compressor C is our compressor compressor power is so many kilowatt so we have all the information that is needed any question that is asked all the answers are there notice that because we click the super calculate button a detailed output is generated here uh, this is a table of properties that can be exported to an Excel sheet. All the states are calculated, devices are calculated, and the test code is right here. So all our work is preserved here, uh, except you have to copy and paste it, keep for your own record, so that later on you can just bring the solution back here. So for instance, if I just copy If I copy this solution control C I can come back later on and just paste the solution right here and click the load button to regenerate the solution a quick what-if study suppose the question uh, what was the what-if question uh, the what-if question was that how would the answer in part a change what is part a uh, the thermal efficiency of the cycle uh, if the turbine efficiency was hundred percent okay right now what is the cycle efficiency it is 31.5 percent so we go and change the turbine efficiency which is at state 3 that's where the turbine efficiency entered so to make it 100 percent we can just call it 1 which means basically h3 equals h2 now as you can see h h1 get cancelled so h3 equals h2 and we click super calculate Remember the thermal efficiency was 31.5% and let's go ch check it increased to 37 almost by 6%. Okay, likewise you can do a what if study on the turbine uh, pump efficiency and you will see that the pump, pump efficiency has very little impact on the overall thermal efficiency. One last thing, remember we generated the test code and I actually saved it on a notepad uh, for this problem so I'm copying the test code to show how solutions are regenerated so let's super initialize that means the test calc has no memory of any solution so we come here in the IO panel and we just paste the test code and click the load button and the original solution is going to be regenerated in a second and go to the cycle panel you recall the 31.5 percent was the original thermal efficiency of the cycle so we got back the solution so if you have the test code you can quickly regenerate the solution and perform different what-if studies uh, so I'll stop here thank you